If you type the names of Elvis and Priscilla Presley into the search bar, you will see a lot of articles with the words great love, romance, the best couple, and so on. But for some reason, these articles carefully ignore the fact that at the time of their meeting, the girl was 14 years old and the star was 24 years old. According to many, Elvis' relationship with his mother had a serious impact on him. Her name was Gladys. She was expecting not one child, but two twins. Unfortunately, only one survived. She took care of her only son Elvis with all her might. She always took him to school herself, protected him from the attacks of bullies, and for 19 years, they did not part for a day. And until the age of 17, the son slept with his mother in the same bed. It was not only the poverty in which the Presleys lived, but also the fact that Mom was not ready to part with her beloved son for a minute. And then, when Presley became a real star, he called his mother every day, despite 20 concerts a month in different cities. And Gladys kept telling his friends, Elvis has bad habits. I rely on you to take care of my boy. Make sure that he takes money out of his pockets when he gives things to the laundry and watch him at night. He is a sleepwalker. Gladys passed away in 1958. His mother was a deity to him, a real idol, and their bond was too strong. And soon after the death of his mother, Elvis met Priscilla, who looked very much like her. At a party in Wiesbaden in 1959, 14-year-old Priscilla Bouliou happened to be there. Her father was a Navy pilot who died in a plane crash when the baby was less than a year old. The girl and her five stepbrothers were raised by her stepfather, Captain Paul Bouliou. Like all military families, they moved frequently until they settled in Wiesbaden, Germany. Elvis was drafted into the army in March 1958 and, having completed his military training, went to the base of the 3rd Armored Division, located just in West Germany. Elvis and Priscilla met, and the young man began to clearly attract the girl's attention. There, at the party, he sat down at the piano and started playing. At the same time, he sang Are You Lonesome Tonight for Priscilla, and she couldn't believe that Elvis Presley himself was trying to please her. The singer, by the way, did not see any problem in such an age difference. Or rather, it didn't bother him that he was an adult and she was a child. He was confident that he could turn Priscilla into the perfect woman. They chatted all evening and even exchanged phone numbers, although the girl did not believe that Elvis would call her. But Priscilla was wrong. After a couple of days, Elvis called her and invited her to his place. I swear I will never do anything that could harm you. I will treat you like a sister, the king of rock and roll kept saying. And it was true. He raised her to a certain pedestal, protected and cared for her, constantly swearing eternal love. At the same time, he told his friend Rex Mansfield that Priscilla was young enough for me to mold her into whatever I want. Priscilla's parents were initially shocked by their daughter's affair with Elvis, and they even tried to keep the girl at home so that she would not meet with him. But in the end, Presley came to dinner with them, fit in military uniform, was courteous and convinced his parents that he had the most serious intentions towards Priscilla. Amazingly, the parents agreed, specifying that their girl needed to graduate from school. However, they separated, and Priscilla wrote letters to him. Then she heard a rumor about Elvis' affair with Nancy Sinatra, by the way, also a teenage girl, and Presley himself gradually reduced communication to nothing. But suddenly, two years later, the singer showed up and invited Priscilla to come to him in Los Angeles. It didn't take long to convince Captain Beaulieu, and on the eve of her coming of age, Priscilla went to visit her beloved on vacation. In 1962, she finally moved in with him in Memphis, the Presley family home. The couple hid the relationship so that the fans would not rebel. Elvis didn't lay a finger on Priscilla until the wedding night, and when she started having problems with school grades, he began to feed her some vitamins so that she would be more cheerful and not sleep in class. In fact, these were narcotic substances that the singer himself began to use in the army. Of course, it was not worth telling anyone about this. At the same time, he told her about his relationship with his mother and how it was still hard for him without her, how he loved Gladys, and that he always felt her invisible presence. Presley's career was then rapidly climbing the mountain, and he was constantly on tour. 
Priscilla was very lonely, she had no friends, and she was not allowed to leave the house unnecessarily so that the paparazzi would not see her. Rarely, but Elvis could pick her up at school and take her to Los Angeles, where filming was underway at the time. On Christmas Eve 1966, he proposed to Priscilla. Everything was still kept in a terrible secret. Before the wedding, at midnight on May 1, 1967, Priscilla and Elvis flew to Las Vegas on Frank Sinatra's private jet. At 3 o'clock in the morning, they got married in a hotel room in the presence of 14 people. Later, there was the first dance of the young people to Love Me Tender, a small press conference, and a festive breakfast for 100 guests. And finally, the wedding night. Thanks to his mother, he developed a Madonna and Harla complex. For him, all women in the world were divided into those with whom one can enter into intimacy, harlots, and those who are pure, immaculate, and created for marriage and childbirth, Madonna. Men with such a complex are capable of experiencing real passion only for harlots. Exactly nine months after her marriage, Priscilla gave birth to a daughter named Lisa Marie Presley. The singer's young wife said that he was a caring and gentle father. He spared nothing for his daughter, and when he bought his own plane in 1975, he named it Lisa Marie. But in the relationship between Priscilla and Elvis, everything was bad. It is worth recalling that even before the birth of the child, Elvis completely subjugated Priscilla. She wore the clothes that he liked, she calmed and dyed her hair the way he wanted, she behaved only as it was right in the opinion of the king of rock and roll. She was a housewife, a mom, a wife, but she was definitely not herself. Priscilla became a kind of expensive and beautiful accessory for Presley, which he, as he wanted, brought up for himself. But after the appearance of Lisa Marie, the physical intimacy between Elvis and Priscilla stopped. Priscilla recalled that even before the wedding, Elvis casually mentioned that he would not be able to do this with someone who has a child, because she is a mother. She is the Madonna who cannot be defamed. Priscilla recalled feeling drained and insecure as a woman. Presley left the house and had his own life there. He stopped being interested in his wife, spent more time with friends and new girlfriends. Priscilla was just going crazy from this and tried to pretend that she did not notice the fleeting adultery. And Elvis continued to live his stellar life, telling his wife that this was such a way of life. What could be done here? And you sit, dear, take care of your hair and grow up your daughter. Look how good your golden cage is. But everything has a limit. In 1972, an exhausted Priscilla said she couldn't do it anymore and left him. And she added that she likes the correct instructor. Presley was beside himself with anger and even wanted to hire a hitman to kill a rival, but then they were able to dissuade him. And besides the attitude towards his wife, everything was getting worse. Elvis was quite short-tempered. He could shoot at the TV if he didn't like someone there not to mention his addiction to various kinds of banned substances. The divorce was officially finalized in 1973. Priscilla was only 28 years old at the time. She has lived with Elvis exactly as long as she was when they'd met. Priscilla received a number of Presley's assets and monthly maintenance for herself and the child for 10 years. The relationship between them remained friendly, and Priscilla never limited the communication between father and daughter. In 1984, Priscilla remarried Marco Garibaldi, an Italian screenwriter, and three years later, they had a son. The daughter of Elvis Presley and Priscilla died in 2023 from cardiac arrest. Priscilla continues to claim that despite the divorce, Elvis' death was a blow to her. She never got rid of her attachment to the grown-up guy who once played for her at a party. I had to learn more about the world. I didn't have a teenage age like a normal girl, and I just watched what he was doing and repeated. I didn't have a life of my own, and I kind of lost myself.